grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. God promises to bring Israel back to its land from the most remote parts of exile. In Zion, Israel will rejoice over God's gifts of food and livestock. Young women will express their joy in dancing. God will give gladness instead of sorrow. Reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the furthest places of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the love, the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the old men, young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Second reading is from Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. In Jesus, all of God's plans and purposes have been made known as heaven and earth are united in Christ. Through Jesus, we have become chosen as God's children and have promised eternal salvation. A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. <clears throat> in him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Out there, just a little beyond the church parking lot, and down the street to the gas station, and then back on our side to the little Mexican store, and as far as you can go to the Melbourne Square Mall, and further south and north and east and west, as far as you can go, Christmas is over. Christmas is over. Oh, a few of us may still have our trees up, and that's a good thing. But for the world out there, Christmas is pretty much over. For the malls and other merchants, Christmas began around the middle of October. And some of them it began the day after Labor Day in September. And then it reached a peak on the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. And then the peak continued the next day, Saturday, Small Business Saturday. And then it skipped over Sunday and went to Monday where you're all supposed to buy online. And then it kind of drifted along until the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even Thursday before Christmas Day. And that was it. The Monday after Christmas Day, the malls are taking down all the Christmas decorations. Three days later, the only thing that was left was part of the Santa Claus display that hadn't been fully removed. But everything else was gone. And every advertisement was promoting end of the year sales. And there was even a charity on television that advertised, now that Christmas is over, it's time to give your end of the year donations. Christmas is over out there, but Christmas is not over in here, and it's not over in congregations worldwide, some bigger than this one, some smaller than this one, because for us, Christmas lasts for 12 days. Today's only the ninth day of Christmas. There's three more days to go, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The Christmas season 
during which we continue to celebrate Jesus' birth. And so the songs we've been singing are very appropriate for Christmas because here it's still Christmas. Only none of our scripture readings said anything about traveling to Bethlehem or staying in a stable or a child being born in a manger. None of that at all. In fact, our first lesson goes all the way back 500 years before Jesus' birth. And the wealthy, prominent people of the nation of Israel for about 40 years have been living in Babylon actually as captives. Only they were allowed to settle in, they were allowed to have their children, their children were allowed to grow up. Some of them now were in their 20s or even older. They were allowed to establish businesses. But there were always religious leaders and others among them who wanted to go, go back to Jerusalem and, and rebuild the temple and rebuild the holy city. And finally, thanks for God acting through a man named Cyrus of Persia, who didn't even believe in God, but God worked through him. He conquered Babylon and he said, you Jewish people, if you'd like to go back to Jerusalem, you're free to do so. And many of them did. In other words, God acted to save them through Cyrus of Persia. God's saving work. Well then, we leap to the middle reading. Again, nothing about a baby. This was written perhaps 50 years after Jesus was born. And a man named Paul is writing it. And originally, he was trying to persecute those who followed Jesus. But then he himself was converted dramatically. And then he went around the Roman Empire starting little congregations, mostly house churches. And one of them was in Ephesus. And then whenever he'd leave a location, he'd, he'd hear about that congregation and he'd write back to them. And what we had this morning was a portion of that letter of Pastor Paul back to his congregation in Ephesus. But, oh, what a problem. This passage has been. Did you catch it? The word predestined? Have you heard of predestination? Predestination. You are predestined to be in this church this morning. You're predestined to live in Melbourne or nearby. You're predestined to work whatever job you're working. You're predestined to go to whatever school you go to. No! That's not what it says. It says you are predestined to be a child of God. You are predestined by God even before you were born to be one of the people saved by Jesus. That was true of that congregation in Ephesus, made up mostly of people who had been pagans. And it's true down through the ages, right down to this place. Predestination, predestined to be saved by the accomplishments of Jesus. Predestined to be one of God's favored people. Which leaves us with the gospel reading. And again, nothing about a babe in Bethlehem because this reading came perhaps as much as 80 years after the birth of Jesus. As far as we know, it probably was written by his youngest disciple named John, who now is alone, isolated, has had a lot of time to think. And he writes poetically, Formally, in the beginning was the Word. 
and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, that's a bit confusing. Let's admit it. But he keeps going on. And then he sort of interrupts himself by saying, there was this man named John, and he came to proclaim the Word, but he was not the Word. And then he finally gets to his point, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And some of those who should have recognized him did not. But those who did recognize him and who accepted his message and his actions on the cross and in the resurrection and on to his ascension, those people are blessed by God. And then if you read the rest of the Gospel of John, you find all kinds of stories that Jesus told to kind of proclaim the message Again, like those people in ancient Israel and those people in Ephesus, you today, among those who are saved from your sin by the love of Jesus, you today are assured of God's love for you. So, even though the rest of the world, most of it, has declared that Christmas is over, we're still celebrating Christmas, but much more than just the birth of a baby Jesus. We're celebrating everything that Jesus has said and done for us. We're celebrating that you people are among those who have been saved from sin's consequences. You people are among those who are loved eternally by God. You are saved from sin and loved by God forever. That's the good news for today. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You make yourself known in the gift of language and diverse forms. Draw our attention to those who communicate through sign, braille, and technology. Make your church a place where all methods of communication are celebrated. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning. Thank you for wake, waking us up today to witness and share your abundance. Awaken us always to your wisdom and deepen our care for your natural world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Emmanuel, in your name we are assured that you are with us. Train nations and peoples to honor and respect one another, especially those whose names and identities have been mistreated, neglected, or oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You adopt us as your beloved ones. Accompany parents and children navigating the adoption process especially those in the foster system. Sustain those struggling with infertility or pregnancy loss. Tenderly embrace all in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You journey with us through change. Guide those assuming new roles in this congregation or making transitions in their families, workplaces, or communities. As the seasons and the cha calendar change, equip us for unexpected challenges. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
We give you thanks for all who model lives of loving service. Lead us in your grace until, with all your saints, we enter the fullness of your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make it shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord give you favor and give you peace. In Jesus' Amen. name, amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.